All right, I'm going to give this a go. Um, greetings. My name is Alyssa. My pronouns are they, them. Welcome to the space and time that you're in. Uh, perhaps acknowledging any identities and uh, importance of this time. Um, sometimes who you are and how you are is an important as to how you're going to practice. Um, so whatever that means for you, you might take time to take stock of how things are, to check in. Um, I'm here in my space and the place that I live. I'm still kind of trying to figure out how to get cameras and recording things to work in this new, new world. Um, so I almost fit in this shot. <laughs> I apologize that um, it's a little lo-fi in that way. Same thing with lighting and sound. Um, it's just an offering. So I remember that mostly uh, when I used to teach humans in space and time, if you were ever there or perhaps you've been in other rooms like this, I used to kind of squat down in the back, find a corner somewhere where only a few people could see me and just talk uh, clearly and loudly enough, uh, tonally enough to be heard throughout the space by everyone. Um, and giving cues. And sometimes I tried not to talk very much, in fact, at all, if, if we were lucky. Sometimes I talked continuously through the whole thing, breath by breath, cued in that way. Um, and hopefully the auditory portion of this is really the important part. So the truth is I'm interested in practicing. Uh, practicing with you gives me the opportunity to hear at least my own breath drawing in and out. Um, which is what I used to pay attention to most of the time when I was teaching people in space, was how you're breathing, how you're moving, um, watching and observing, witnessing really in that way. Um, because most of the time you're doing your own observational work and I'm just kind of there <laughs> on the outside, making sure that our ship moves through the waves right while you do um, your internal work. All right, now that I've waxed poetic, let's begin. I'm going to start standing today. You might start at any position that you like. Remember, you ultimately have sovereignty, and that's more important, really, than the choreography, than satisfying some sort of aesthetic or idea of the gooder or the more beautiful. <clears throat> Samasiti is a mudra, which really is a gesture, an energetic idea. How do you know that someone waving their hand at you means hello? I think that's really what a gesture is, is um, something that has that sort of filled with meaning communication. We communicate a sense of standing in the universe, standing uh, on all sides close, same, sama. And how is it that we stand in equilibrium with everything? And how is it we just use our internal ear, our equilibrium to stand at the center? You might have your eyes open, looking out on the horizon. You might have your eyes closed. If you're like me, you might notice your tendencies of tension, the places that you naturally are already holding or trying to manage your weight against gravity. You might notice that you're on a spinning planet in a revolving universe, so stillness really not something that exists. You're moving always. You do use your equilibrium as you have for hundreds of thousands of years to collaborate with gravity to collaborate with air pressure around you by posture and volume of breath. And so as you stand in this way, I know that we're gonna move uh, with a little bit of gentle rigor today. And I wanna offer that rigor is something you own. It doesn't have to be fast, it doesn't have to be too much. And sometimes I talk about the 85 percentile, and that is especially for those of you who tend to push towards achievement naturally. You might think about doing less on purpose just to see what the overall result of our time is and give the experiment a little bit of faith, <laughs> give it a little bit of time and space. And we often push ourselves to a point of survival, right? A world of trauma has really taught us that. And so the opportunity for thriving might be somewhere right, a little further back and away from the edge of your um, exquisiteness. All right, having said that, Please breathe, I'll cue the breath the best I can. Vijayi Pranayama means upper liberating breath. Before we move into breathing in that way, we're gonna take three rounds of the seed sound of Om. I offer it as a secular chant to acknowledge the interconnection between everything. If for any reason at all, when your chanting isn't for you at this time, this day, 
right? Or overall, you could always stand or sit with us in your own balance, in samastitihi, in silence, right? Listen and feel for that same sense of acknowledgement, right? Equilibrium, right? You are everything. And also you are everything by being the specific thing that you are. To clear and prepare the energetic channel of your body, take an inhale and through your nose. Open your mouth to exhale. Inhale, prepare to om. Fall to silence, begin to breathe in and out through your nose. On purpose, long and slow, smooth and deep. Uji, Pranayama, inhale. Uji, Pranayama, exhale. And if you're congested, you need to, you can always breathe out through your mouth. You can always breathe when you need to, even if it's a different time that I'm cueing. Try not to create a sense of panic by overholding or pushing your breath. Assume that you will breathe many more times in this lifetime. In your next inhale, flutter your eyes open. Your next exhale, tune into what's about you. Slowly at first, sun salutations. Take them. Inhale your arms up for Urkha Hastasana. You may stop with your hand shoulder distance. You might bring your palms to press or look up. Do it. Exhale forward fold. Feel free to bend your knees as you introduce. Trini, inhale. Halfway lift and roll your heart straight up. Chitvari, exhale. Hands down. Step back. Chaturanga Dandasana to the earth for the first time. Pancha, inhale. Bhujangasana. Uh, the cobra pose. Bring the tops of your feet down. Feel your heart up. Shut, exhale, make your way back. You might roll through child's pose on the way to downward facing dog, out of the shavasana, breathing. You can bend your knees, lift your heels, you can shift around. Um, if you move to distract, then you might consider not moving sometimes just to see if you know what that's like. No torture, but you might consider where you suspend weight if you're breathing. Especially if things get complicated with the way your mind pulls and pushes you around, what you perceive, what you sense, what you think about, what stories you're telling. You might just draw yourself back to observational awareness. Can you listen for your breath or feel for its sensation? You pay attention to gravity and how it is you're using the spring of your body. Press down to expand upward. Exhale to step or float forward or right on your feet. Slip to inhale, halfway lift. Anjali and unroll your spine. Ashto, exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Noah, inhale all the way up to Urgo Hastasana, reach upward. Exhale, Samasiti. Stand in neutral. That's classic, basic. You do it a little differently a few times. Akam, inhale, arms up. Do an exhale, fold. Jenny, inhale and roll. On your exhale, step your right foot back. Inhale and roll your heart. Exhale, hands down. Downward facing dog pose. You can inhale to roll forward and exhale. Like bend your knees. Lower your chest and chin. Chaturanga Dandasana. Anjali, inhale, Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. Shot, exhale, Anamukha, Shanasana, Dhamma, Dhamma. Take a big free inhale in. 
Exhale, step your right foot forward. Inhale, grab it and draw it up. Inhale, and lower your heart. Exhale, step forward to fold. Slip it. Inhale, halfway lift. Ashto, exhale, folding. Lower, inhale, all the way up. Urbha Hastasana. Exhale, Sama Siji. Make an inhale, arms up. Lift your rib cage up. Your sternum, your chest bone. Do a exhale, fold forward. Trini, inhale, and roll. Exhale, fold. Step your left foot back. Inhale and lower your heart. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Inhale, roll forward. Exhale, Chaturi, Chaturanga, Dandasana. All the way down in your own way. Kancha, inhale. Bhujangasana, Cobra pose. Exhale, downward facing dog. Nishat, breathing. Press through all five fingers of each hand and the knuckles closest to the palm. Now that there's arches, right? Like the curved hoops, half hoops. And making up the structure of your hand. The genetics that made it load bearing once, still reminiscent in the structure. And we teach the hands to be like feet. Exhale to step your left foot forward. Inhale and roll your heart. Exhale, step forward and fold. Swift it, inhale and roll. Ash to exhale, folding. Noah, inhale all the way up. Urdhva Hastasana, reach to rise and plate to expand. Exhale. Samasiti. Sorry, make an inhale, arms up. Do an exhale, fold. Trini, inhale, and roll halfway. Chitauri, exhale, hands down, step back. Chaturanga, Dambasana, and draw bows, lower halfway or all the way. Pancha, inhale, upward facing dog. Kick the tops of your feet down, your hips trying to lift up off the ground. Exhale, acknowledge, lower your knees to roll back towards Adamukha Svanasana. Shadows downward facing dog pose. Five breaths is classic. Three is good. You can always make your own choices, especially if you find that you rush. It can be good to do work of staying over time. You don't need to torture yourself. But I find that it is often those things that we overlook or the sort of secret ingredients <laughs> lie to our work. Exhale to step our foot forward, arrive on your feet. Slip to inhale and roll halfway lift. Ashto, exhale, forward fold. Noah, inhale all the way up. Urdhva Hastasana, reach upward. Exhale, Samasthiti. Make an inhale, arms up. Do a exhale fold. Trini, inhale and roll. Chitari, exhale, step or foot back. Chaturanga, Dandasana. Pancha, inhale. Urdhva Mukha, Svanasana, strong legs. Shat, exhale. Adho Mukha, Svanasana, strong legs. Ajiti, Pranayama. And remember, the bent knees sometimes is the way to extend your lower back, to create more arcing. Hang your head or tuck your chin. Whether your knees are bent or not, you may experiment with lifting your heels, shifting your weight from side to side, walking your hands wider or closer, experimenting with the distance between your hands and your feet. Exhale, step or foot forward. Slip to inhale and roll. Ashta, exhale, fold. Noah, inhale all the way up. Exhale, Sama CT. All right. Lynn's going to have just a bunch of stuff. 
add it in. Inhale your arms up. Urdhva Hastasana means arms up to pose. Do it. Exhale, fold forward. Second position is Uttanasana, extending from center pose. Trini, inhale. Ardha Uttanasana, halfway, folding. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. The forearm staff pose. Pancha, inhale. Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, the upward facing dog posture. Shat, exhale. Downward facing dog. Mudra, gesture, action, breathe. Inhale out into a plank and pause. Or you can do this on your hands, your forearms, your fists. Bring it up against a wall. You can find an angle that makes sense. Soften your blades of shoulders in your back. Right? So you go down towards your hips. Up your tail a little so your belly can draw air like nothing is true. Imagine the roof of your mouth and the crown of your head are pressing away from your tail and your heels. And if that really stretches your Achilles tendons, you might need more space between your hands and your feet. Breathe in for three more rounds of breath. You can always do this with your knees on the earth. Exhale, lower your knees and lift your hands back underneath your armpits. Inhale, cow pose, lift your chin and tail. Exhale, cat. And this is basically the undulation of our body throughout the posture. So inhale, cow. Yet we extend the spine or we back bend. Exhale, cat. We round the spine. We forward curve, curve, fold. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Find a neutral spine. And inhale to take your uh, left arm out and then up. Feel free to hang your head or turn your neck as feels best for you. And exhale, thread the needle underneath and behind your right wrist. You might come down to rest on your shoulder, ear, or jaw. Any variation you like. Sometimes, again, a lot of movement, sometimes a lot of stillness. I urge you to follow any specific bits of intuition or wisdom that emerge. Sometimes you know. It doesn't have to be a fight against all your tendencies. Like look in all the in all the lost rooms for treasure, you know. Continue to believe that you'll find it in there. Press into your right hand on the earth and inhale your left arm out and up. And exhale to tabletop. Inhale your uh, right arm out and then up. Exhale, thread the needle underneath and behind your left wrist. Come down to shoulder, ear, or jaw. Notice if you press your head into the ground or grind your teeth. It might seem like these sound like extreme actions, but sometimes they're kind of regular. Just really often have physical coping for stress that we don't really show or see. Sometimes it even only happens in our sleep. It can come out. And then that physical practice, like yoga, et cetera, so on. Press into your left hand from the earth and inhale your right arm up. Exhale to tabletop. Inhale, cow pose. You might stay in cow pose. You drop your shoulder blades, lift your heart. You might drop your head and turn it gently with the handle on the playground, or you might uh, walk your elbows to the earth, or even bring your armpits down towards the Anahata Vashuddha, the melting heart pose. And you'll let the front seam of the chest have a little bit of space for expansion. Like most organic matter, the body expands and tracks a great deal. 
We want to make sure we're being mindful about how we ask ourselves to stretch in the universe. We come back to your hands and knees and now curl your toes, lift your knees and hips. Exhale into shat, downward facing dog pose. Press into your hands and exhale. The second foot forward. Swift to inhale and roll halfway lift. Ashto. Exhale, fold forward. Now we inhale all the way up, or Bonasasana, reach to rise and play to expand. Exhale, Samasana. All right. Remember, you don't need to do every uh, vinyasa, every push up. You could always skip them. And truly, like, you know, it can be hard to not do it. But give yourself a break. Right? If there's a twinge or a twist or a feeling of sort of weakness in your joint, your body is communicating with you. Right? Why would we ignore it? You take the time to change, adapt, modify. You usually have the skills already. Most people have a lot of information actually about what the postures are and things like that. Yeah, but mostly it comes from how you feel, right? From a felt sense. And notice how you stack your bones, how you use your sense of architecture. All right, let's do Surya Namaskar B. Remember, you can work with your three hips distance together. Uh, any point in between, you can turn things in or out. See what feels actually neutral, even if you have to work against your own tendencies a little bit. Take a big free inhale. Exhale, bend your knees, sink your hips. Utkatasana, fierce pose. Rock your weight into your heels. Inhale your arms forward, out, or up. Maybe the palms will press, the thumbs will turn it forward. Stick your tail out and rock your weight back into your heels. Back bend, lay the down dog is, and you're folding at your hips. Take another big free inhale if you need it. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale. Upward dog or cobra. Exhale. Downward dog and still exhaling. Step your right foot forward. Spin your left heel down. Inhale. Warrior one. Rise up. Bend your right knee. Spin your right thigh out. Lift your heart up. Exhale. Chaturanga Dandasana. Plant your hands and step back. Inhale. Upward dog. Exhale. Downward dog, step your left foot forward. Inhale, warrior one, rise up. Point your heels into the earth. Exhale, chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Breathing. Ujjayi, Pranayama, or Sama, Vritti. Same fluctuating of your breath. Like your inhales sound like your exhales. Your exhales sound like your inhales. Exhale to step or float forward. Rise on your feet. Inhale, halfway lift, unroll your heart. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees, sink your hips back to Utkatasana. Inhale, take your arms to their position, outer up. Still inhaling, stand all the way up to Urdhva Hasta Asana. Exhale, Samasiti, that's classic. Bend your knees, sink your hips a little different this time. Inhale, your arms up, Utkatasana. Exhale. Forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, step to plank pose. Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Step your right foot forward. This time, drop your left knee to the earth. You can climb up on your right knee thigh or rise up if you feel stable. You might widen the stance between right to left. Reach your left arm up or both arms up, inhale. Exhale, 
hands down, step back. Plank pose, side plank, right hand is your base, roll to the outside edge of your right foot. And I do this on my hand, but you might do it on your forearm or fist. If you're on a prop, you can always do this, the bottom knee down, especially if it feels like undue joint pressure. Push down to reach up. Good exhale. Plank pose to Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, we're going to move to upper dog. Exhale, Adho Mukha Downward Dog, left foot, right knee. Inhale to rise. Take a few breaths to settle. Often we do this one breath to one movement, but take your time, right? Especially in the winter of the season, as the winter of the year emerges the end of fall, right? We do not need to rush, and in fact, we're reflecting for a reason. Take an inhale. And exhale, step back, plank pose, left hand for side plank, roll to the outside edge. Breathing. Remember not to over perfect your body's natural posture of actions. Exhale, right hand down, chaturanga of your choice, or skip it. Inhale to upward dog. Exhale. Downward dog. And breathe in and out through your nose. Exhale, step the foot forward, your feet up towards your hands. Inhale, halfway lift and roll. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees, Utkatasana, fierce pose. Keep the spring of your hips, your hamstrings, your tail out as you inhale your arms up. And still inhaling, press your heels down to rise up. Exhale. Come on, seat to heel. Let's do one more. Bend your knees, sink your hips. Inhale, fierce pose. Exhale to fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Inhale, upper dog. Exhale, downward dog, right foot. Inhale. Virabhadrasana, warrior pose. You might plug your left heel down. It can also work in the Anjani. Your back heel lifted. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog, left foot. Inhale, Virabhadra, rise up. Root into the ground. Stay low in your hips. Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Plant your hands to sit. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale. Downward dog. Exhale to step or float forward, rise on your feet. Inhale and roll your heart, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees, sink your hips. Inhale, fierce pose. Still inhaling, stand up. Exhale. Samasiti. All right, we're gonna move through some standing postures. And I'm going to offer um, <laughs> repeating some things and flowing through some things in a less than classical way. So if you do it a different way, I know that this is just like an experiment, right? So you could always do it the way you do it, especially if you're learning a great deal from repeating, right? which can be of great value.
All right, and we said that. We'll start the way we often do, standing forward, fold. Next up, row, we'll add some friends. So take your feet out hips distance. Exhale, bend your knees, sink your hips with Katasana. Now notice, right, some of us have a tendency to dry in, some of us have a tendency to roll out. Better find what feels neutral. Most of us will be a little turned out. Stick your tail out, draw your navel in, lift your heart up. And you might gaze up. If you can't gaze straight up, notice where you can gaze, like out and up. Rock your shoulders, lift your heart. Rock your weight back so far as like you would fall down backwards, but for how much forward and up you're reaching. And breathe there. Three, more rounds of breath. You might draw your uh, mula bandha in and up on your exhales. Lift the floor of your pelvis. And exhale, fold forward. Parangustasana, take your big uh, piece on your fingers around your big toes. Use your small fingers on them. Inhale, halfway lift and lower your heart. Exhale, fold, bend your elbows up. Remember to bend your knees as much as you need to. Make space to fold your ribs toward your legs. You might even tuck your chin. Breath by breath. Draw your body to your legs and your legs to your body. Inhale, half lift style. Exhale, fingers off the toes, bend your knees, sink your hips. Inhale to lift your heart up, arms up if you like. Exhale, twist to the right, bring your right arm back and your left arm forward. Now you can use maybe your left hand inside your left leg to press. And maybe you can go outside your right knee. Maybe you can tilt forward and hook an elbow, press your palm. Maybe they're binding or something. But we're twisting. Take another uh, inhale or two. Remember, you can always catch us or, you know, hit pause, feel free. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale, twist. It's one of the great gifts, right? Finally, you can stop me from moving so quickly if you don't want to. And then again, take a few breaths. And figure out for what version. And remember, over compression is not required. It doesn't have to go deep to be good. Let yourself be free from dualistic expectation. The idea that you have to redeem. Inhale back through center. Exhale, fold forward. Parahastasana. You might know, grab your big toes again or wrap something around your feet. You could also take the palms of your hands below the soles if that happens mm -hmm. to work out. And feel free to bend your knees, bring your ribs towards the inside edges of your legs if you like. Inhale and roll your heart and exhale, fold and breathe. Bend your elbows, draw yourself in and down, breath by breath. Inhale and roll your heart and exhale, release. Bend your knees, sink your hips, inhale, Utkatasana. Still inhaling, stand up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Samasiti. All right, here, Trikonasana, and bodies. Inhale, step your right foot back and turn to the right. Exhale, fold over the crease of your right hip, right hand down, left arm up. Minimal load going in your bottom hand. You can always put a prop, the ground and center, upside of your foot, catch a stool. You feel free to take two piece and fingers around your big toe. We're twisting. Move your left hip forward and down. Lower your left shoulder, open it up. You might gaze up. Tuck your chin into your collarbone. Draw your navel to your spine. Stay or exhale, bend your right knee. Lift up into the half moon pose, or Chandrasana. Now 
lift your left leg up. You might work here with balance and breath. You could bend your left knee, reach for your foot, wrap it up with a scarf, etc. So on. Balance, binding the pose. It's just one way to work. Move your way back as you will through the triangle pose. And when you feel stable, use an inhale to stand up and turn your feet around to the left. Exhale, triangle pose to the left side. Remember, you can work with your knees bent, but really this is about twisting. You feel like your upper body is so low or contained by the tightness of your lower body that you can't twist. Then bending your knees might really be helpful. And same thing with lifting your torso up. I really encourage you to experiment. Feel free to stay. Uh, exhale to look down. Inhale to step up. You might not look down, in fact. You might peek your gaze up. Our addiction does that happen. Even though your left hand is helping you with the balance, maybe fingertips or palm on the earth or something nearby. Continue to balance the fulcrum of your body's weight over your left foot and heel. You might bend your right knee and reach for your foot. Make your way back, perhaps more gingerly than I, into triangle pose. Step your right foot back and down. Balance has always been a big challenge for me in physical practice and in life. Once you feel stable, inhale, stand up, just to be real about it. And exhale, turn towards your right foot, the revolved triangle, fold over your right leg, left hand down, twist to the right. You might bring your right hand to your right hip. Try to lift your left hip up by shifting your right back towards your back heel. It'll feel tight in your front hamstring to do so, but that's the idea. You can always work with your bent knees to try out those wiggles and shifts. Gaze up and bring your feet up. And exhale to look down. Inhale to stand up and reverse your feet. Exhale to fold over your left leg. You always bend your knees, especially going in and out of deep folds to adjust your feet, etc. I want space, dynamicism in our joints. Inhale by inhale, twist left. A panic twisting, we round the spine. We don't worry so much about the panic extension that emerges every time. Let yourself be all twisted up like a snail in a shell. Exhale to look down, inhale, stand up, turn your feet parallel, exhale to step into Samasitihi at the top of your mat. Inhale your arms up, Urdhvasasana, exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana, inhale, halfway lift, Urdha, exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, inhale, up with dog. Exhale, downward dog. Breathing. in. 
Exhale, step your foot forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, stand all the way up. Exhale, Soma CT. Inhale, step your right foot back. Udhita, Prasakanasana, side angle. You might widen your feet as you exhale to bend your right knee. A lot of folks, you might come to your elbow to knee and then see what happens if you let your arm go. I'm trying to work the side abdominals, the obliques, the angles from your back heel through your heart, through your crown. And you twist on that axis. The A variation, you press your knee out into your arms, or the arms on the outside edge. And you take your left arm up or over. Breathe deeply. Notice if you're doing any work you don't need to do. Inhale, stand up and reverse your feet. Exhale, bend your left knee, A variation, and parsa kanasana, the side angle. And bring your elbow to your knee. And some people I used to do variations like this a lot. And it became very shouldered, I think, for a lot of people. You know, most popular. You might bring your arm outside your leg. Bring your hand to your hip as you go to your heart open. Notice if your knee wants to turn in, you might have to work it in the opposite direction. You might take your right arm up or over. Breathe. Inhale, stand up and reverse your feet. Exhale, Parsvakonasana B. Bend your right knee and come down on the inside edge of your right leg. Inhale your left arm up. Now you can always get low about it. Bring your back knee down with your right shoulder inside of your leg. You might do this work from a more lifted place. It might be about turning your leg around so that your knee doesn't feel twisted. Experiment. You might buy reaching your arms to meet around behind your back or grab your clothes behind your right hip. And take a few breaths. Notice how things really are. You can always stay, work in and out of binding. You can exhale to step your left foot up to meet your right. Fold forward in the shape of binding. You can always re-catch anything that's turned away or grab a strap. You're welcome to experiment with pouring weight into your left foot and standing up. Taking your right leg with you. You might gaze at the horizon. You might extend your right leg out and up or a paradise action. You do any of that slowly. Unwind by putting two feet down. Take a couple exhales to step your left foot back and bind your arms. At any point, you might come out and up to standing and then turn around slowly. Opposite side, come down on the inside edge. And remember, compression sometimes feels very resistant. So notice how much of it you're creating versus is your body's natural boundary. And listen to your intuition, which is really how you read your instinct, the intellect of it, your intelligence around what you sense and feel. You might stay, step your right foot up to meet your left. And again, this might be a good place to stay or to regrow a grip, to hang your head. Sometimes this is the penultimate thing for me, holding in a bind. You might pour the weight into your right foot and stand up, taking your left leg with you. 
Make sure you're quite stable over your right foot and leg. You found the horizon if and when you do extend your left leg up. That's just an option. Sometimes that seems like quite the thing to do right at this point in the practice. Feel free to take the ride to the point that makes sense. The fruit is sweet on all sides of the field. When you're ready, exhale to unbind. Inhale, stand up. Exhale, turn to the right. I'm going to drop my back knee, but you don't have to. Left knee down. <laughs> Definitely winter. Inhale your left arm up and exhale. Get around to the right. Oh. This is the revolve parsa kanasana. So again, you might bind. You might press your top hand into your bottom hand. Sometimes this low down thing is the place where there's a wall or a piece of furniture you can utilize. Sometimes we lift the back knee up. Or spin the back heel down. You take your arms out and away, work to bind them. For some folks, that feels good. You might take your right arm up or over. Inhale, release, stand up, inhale, reverse your legs, turn around to the left. You might drop your back right knee to the earth. If you ever end up on the opposite side, whatever, you know, just do whichever side you think you haven't done yet. This whole being even thing is totally overrated. Inhale, lift your right arm up, exhale, wrap it around your left leg. Sometimes there's a whole brouhaha about that. Try to free yourself from the distractions, even inside of the healing processes that you're using to wake up and liberate yourself. Remember, none of it's perfect. Have questions. Remain skeptical. Remain aware. True to yourself. True to your awareness and intuition. When you can let go of something that you no longer need, but go with it. At least tend to be universal like this. And then exhale to unwind. Inhale to stand up and turn your feet parallel. Exhale, step forward, neutral pose. You could stay in neutral pose and breathe. Or go along with the half sun salutation. Inhale your arms up. Exhale to fold. Inhale halfway lift. Exhale, step back to plank and pause. You could stay in plank and breathe. Skip all this and go down to your child's pose or move through the vinyasa. I'm going to use my next inhale and exhale to bend my right knee up into my chest. Round my lower back. I'm going to keep my upper body relatively the same as upward plank, broad, and my heart open. Exhale to step your right foot back if you draw it in, drew it in, take it in. Now. Exhale, bend your left knee. It's amazing what comes up. You breathe. Draw your left knee in as much as you like. Draw your navel back to your spine. Draw your jaw towards as much softness as you can. Step your left foot back, inhale. Exhale, chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Breathe in the ujjayi form. Marvel, resting. Sometimes child's pose is rest, and sometimes something else is. My knees compress a lot, more than my hips. Relative comfort. I'm not feeling a lot about it, so find a shape always that actually expresses, supports what is required for you to practice liberation. You might imagine if you need more. 
from the very shinkan. We will be inhale to shift forward, draw your toes. Exhale to down dog if you're not already there. Use an exhale to step our foot forward. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, stand up to Urbhasasana. Exhale to Samasiti. Inhale, step your right foot out and back. Parallel your feet, prostrate Apada Tanasana, and guess. Hands on your hips, and you lift your heart. And exhale to fold. Hands towards the earth. Or you can put them on props underneath the, your shoulders. Walk your hands back as far as they go, and your palms still touch the ground. And your elbows bend towards 90 degrees. Inhale and roll, straighten your elbows like an halfway lift. Exhale, fold, bend your elbows and push into the earth. Breath by breath, draw yourself down. Inhale and roll, halfway lift. Exhale, walk your hands to your right foot, turn. Drop your back knee. Inhale, twist to the right, turn your right arm up. You might walk your right foot out to the right and roll your right thigh bone out to the right. You might bend your left knee and reach for your foot behind you. Release your right hand to your right knee and your right foot to a stable place at the center line of your body weight. Inhale to rise up and lift your left arm up. And exhale, side bend over to the right. Come back up to center and inhale. Exhale, release your two hands down. Curl your back toes, lift your back knee and walk your way over to your left foot. Drop your right knee down and inhale your left arm up. Adjust your feet as you need to. Twist to the left. Breath by breath. Exhale your left hand to your left knee. Your left foot to stable center. Inhale your right arm up. And over to the left hand side. Side body bending. Inhale to rise up, exhale to release two hands down. Curl your back toes and walk your way back to center. Inhale and roll your heart and exhale. Folding, bring your hands to your hips. Inhale to stand all the way up. And take an exhale to turn your heels and your toes out and bend your knees and sink your hips. Sit low enough that you feel something happen, you know, maybe a little lower than you think. Take your arms out, bend your elbows a little so you can drop your shoulders, slip your palms up, reach your fingers away from one another, your arms might straighten, nice and degree. Breathe in and out through your nose. Inhale, straighten your legs, turn your feet in, hands on your hips. Exhale to fold, B variation. If safety tells you you gotta put your hands somewhere else, do otherwise keep your hands on your hips. Try to extend your spine isometrically. Press the crown of your head away from your tail. Strong legs. Fold by using your abdominals and your psoas to grow your body through the line of your legs. Inhale and roll your heart. Exhale, release your hands to the earth. Walk them to your right foot. Drop your left knee down and rise up. Now you might have to move your fingers around your knee. Lean back, arcing your spine. Back bend. I like taking a back toes curled sometimes. You're welcome to fall in the top with your foot down. Inhale to reach your arms up. Perhaps you bring your hands to your hips. And exhale to cactus your arms. That might be the shape. Interweave your fingers at the base of your neck if there's a lot of tension there. 
You might be able to hang your head, reach your arms up and back. Exhale to fold your hands to the earth, bring your right foot and straighten your right leg for half Hanuman, half split. You might slide your leg forward, fold over, balance your hips from right to left. Kick with your right heel, press with your left foot. And then exhale to fold and bend your right knee, plant your foot, plant your hands inside your right foot and walk it over to the left. Plant your right knee and rise. You might interweave your fingers around your left knee and inhale to lift your heart. You might take one arm up or both arms up. You might exhale to cactus your arms. You might stay there. You have a lot of creative options. Try not to get too caught up. When you're ready, use an exhale to bring your hands to the earth, to freeing your left foot. Inhale, straighten your left leg for half split, flex your ankle. Tilt back. So you bring your pelvis over your right knee, in your head. And exhale to bend your left knee and pinch your foot. Curl your right toes. Bring your hands inside your leg. As you roll yourself to the center, inhale and roll your heart. Exhale, your hands to your hips. Inhale to stand up. Exhale, heels in, toes out. Bend your knees. You can bring your hands to your hips, your hands to the center like I am, your arms out as we did before. We're going to do this in slow squatting mode. You might exhale to go down. Inhale to come up. I suggest that you stay in a relatively low, like two-thirds of the action, so you don't need to come all the way to straight, nor all the way to the extreme of bend. Somewhere in that, you know, last uh, chunk of that, the second, third, maybe. Breathing. My other dog is a little upset with me right now. You may hear her crying a little bit from time to time. It's not a ghost. Straighten your legs, turn your feet to perpendicular, right with the side of the mat, interweave your fingers, or grab a hold of a towel or a sock, inhale your knuckles down, your heart up, and exhale to fold. You might loosen the grip to rotate through your shoulders, the C variation, the Prasarita Padottanasana, breathing in and out through your nose. Inhale, unroll your heart and exhale. Release your hands, walk over to the right foot. Let's do lizard. Or sometimes refer to as dragon. Drop your back knee down for the more supported form. Lower to the ground. You might walk your right foot out and up to the right and turn it out. So I'll show you my foot back here. See if your hands are coming to your forearms. Some people prefer this to the back knee lifted up. You might walk your right hand around behind your right foot or tuck your shoulder behind your knee. And your head behind your calf. I'm going to take this into a pigeon pose, but you might stay in it, especially a pigeon. It doesn't feel quite so good for you. Also roll into your back, push your right ankle over your left knee for the figure four shape. As you walk your left leg back, you can also place a prop, a pillow. Maybe you have a block underneath your right hip or underneath both hips to stay lifted so your knee isn't so turned. Remember your tip fit does have some turn, your shin, your calf. But not that much. So when your hip, your thigh bone stops turning, your hip socket, we're asking the knee to do the rest of the turning that it needs to do to get into the physics of the action. So you might stay upright, you might fold forward and down over your legs. I'll be right back. <laughs> 
to deal with this dog a little bit. Continuing to breathe as you are, as I kind of turn to my space and objects and realities. I'm probably going to just start another fire when we're done. That should be fine with the weather. All right, inhale to press yourself up. Curl your back toes. You might take your right leg up and back and open your hip and bend your knee. Move your leg around. Mm, when it feels good, just step your foot forward again. Do your right hand inside. Walk your way over to your left foot. Come down for lizard lunging on this side. And again, things might be the same from side to side, but they often aren't. We'll give yourself a break, as it were. Just observe, especially if you tend to sort of edge towards symmetry, you might notice that thought pattern emerge then. You might stay with the sort of drag in and modify it. And if that's a version, you might lift up and walk your left leg over to some form of pigeoning. And again, staying upright sometimes a great way to work, especially when we don't want to put too much pressure on the knee to turn. You might notice the back foot or leg can draw back. Sometimes we're turning it in or out. You try to find as much neutral as you can. Feel that it changes anything, even you at all. Sometimes I say these things and it might not be meaningful for you. That can be an interesting way to work too. Think about what to let go of. And just stay in shape and with that wily dog of mine. Of course she would. your back to the center and then inhale your left leg up and back and then exhale to open your hip. Feel free to move around a little a lot as you see fit. And when it feels best, step your left foot forward. And bring your left hand inside your left foot and inhale to walk your way back to center. Unroll halfway left style. Exhale your hands to your hips. Inhale to stand up. And exhale. Find the horse stance. Turn your heels and your toes up. Bend your knees. Sink your hips. You may take your arms out or up. Sink your hips as low as can go without dropping into a place of compression in your knees. Breathe. Plug your heels down. Soften any grip in your toes. Five breaths or so. And always release when it feels right.
Good. Inhale to straighten your legs. Turn your feet parallel and exhale fold. Two piece hand fingers around your big toes. Inhale and roll. So bend your elbows. Fold them away. Inhale and roll your spine. Exhale, release your hands down, walk your feet away for some kumas and our side splits, same angle pose. So you know you don't need to go super far. You might go 60, 70 percent of your maximum depth. You might come all the way down. You only release your feet like this if you peel the bones on the floor. Otherwise, keep your feet pressed into the ground. Hands or forearms in the air. Breathe. Move is what you need to keep your feet stable. And how you can use that structure to soften tightness in the inseam of your thighs. You can stay, or I'm going to turn to the right and to Hanumanasana of the splits. I curl my back toes to remind me that it's active. Kick through the ball of my front foot and heel. A lot of people work to get their pelvis front facing. Rotate your right hip back and down. I use my hands on the ground so I can hang towards the earth if I can't reach it with my pelvis. Your heart up like upward facing dog. If you turn to the right, go back through the center. I'm going to keep my knees soft to do this a little bent as it were. Turn to the left. You want to be quite awkward. Remember, what I want to see is the soul of yourself. Try to witness yourself with compassion. You don't need to set an expectation of loving yourself more if you can do the pose in a more lyrical way. Or a way that looks more like how it shows up in a catalog or Cirque du Soleil or something like that. Your biodiversity is to be celebrated. The experience of your body as it is, exactly as it is right now in this instant, is worthy and valuable and worth having. Turn back to the center. You might say, and if you're working on inverting, you could press into your forearms or into your fingers or press your palms and try to slide yourself up towards that original folded position. See if from there you can lean your body weight into your hands and inhale up onto your tippy toes. Maybe you'll get some hanging time. And I tuck my chin, bring my head through the circle of my shoulders. And bring your feet back to the ground. Inhale to unroll your heart. And exhale, your hands to your hips. Inhale to stand the rest of the way up. Exhale to Samasiti. Step back to the top. And inhale your arms up, or Vahastasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift and roll your heart. Exhale, plank pose, pause. You could stay, lift your right leg up and just take it out to the right. Notice if it drops down, lift it up, but not so much that your left hip drops up. Breathe and bring it back to center and down. You took your right leg out, take your left leg out, and up. Don't need to be super far to be effective. Breathing. Exhale, replace your left foot, inhale. 
Exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale, Urdhva Mukta Svanasana, Upward Dog. Exhale. Downward facing dog pose. Still exhaling, step our foot forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale to forward fold. Inhale to stand all the way out and up, reaching up. Exhale. Samastiti. Return to neutral. Okay, we're going to do some balancing. I'm going to combine it kind of all together. So keep your sense of humor and remember it's not really all that important if you do it perfectly. It's more important just that you do it with kindness at all. All right, come back to Samasiti. Bend your left foot and spread it out. You might bend your left knee, just like you're doing the boogie boogie. Lift your right heel up. See if you can figure out where balance is for you. So notice if you're like me, I tend to shrug. So I often take a moment after I've done that to find the horizon, to stack my shoulder blades and my collarbones in a way that feels liberating to me. Inhale, bend your right knee, lift your right back on up. Good. So. We often do this whole thing here. We've got the big toe, we extend our leg out. And you're welcome to do it. We're gonna to try to work on the very last part of it mostly. Right, where we're working the right leg out and two hands on the hips. You might extend your right leg out long. Breathe here. Slowly. You can take your arms out to the sides with your palms up. Or take your arms straight up overhead. You might take your hands around behind your back, fold them in reverse prayer, grab her opposite elbow instead with opposite hand. Slowly sweep the earth as you send your right leg back into Digasana, the airplane pose, direction pose, weather vane pose. Think about it being a back bend where your foot your head are higher than your hips. You're curved like a bowl on the side of you. You might have to bring your heart more down than you think. You might have to bend your standing knee to give your hamstring that space to lift your lifted leg up. Exhale to bend your left knee and step your right foot back. Fold forward over your left leg. Pyramid or side stretching pose, Parsvottasana. to Navasana. Inhale to stand up. You might even lean back. Upward bend. And exhale. Come to center. Switch your legs around to the opposite side. Inhale, lift your heart up. And exhale to fold. Over your right leg. Now we haven't done what we did on the other side. So it might feel a lot different. Maybe not at all. It's also normal. How you feel has a lot to do with who you are, your experiences in this lifetime. Good, inhale. Use an exhale to bend your right knee. And inhale, step up onto your right leg. Try to find Digasana, extend your left leg and your heart. Balance over your right hip. At any point, feel free to free up your hands, this furniture around you. Slowly inhale to stand up. And you might bend your knee on the way. I like to do that. Inhale to extend your left leg out. I also got it. There's a dog sleeping in this chair in front of me. Breathing. At a certain point, you might take your arms out or up. Good, and exhale. And to normalize it. All right, we're gonna go sort of the opposite direction. Just think a little bit about these springs in your body. Stand on your left leg, 
and bend your right knee. I'm going to reach back and grab my foot from the inside. My thumb points the same direction as my pointer, my big toe, as it were. If you need to, you can always go to a wall so you can look around behind and check it out. Sometimes turning your arm out like that really feels oppositional to what we're used to. So try not to rely too much on what feels comfortable because that's not always ergonomic. It's just practice. You can bring your left fingertips to your left shoulder, your left elbow point up, and inhale to lift your heart up. Next, you'll begin to kick back with your right foot. You might rotate your right hip forward as you kick back so that you don't just roll up to the outside edge of your left hip and unbalance yourself across your left foot. Once you can't kick anymore, start to lean forward. You may let the bill of your hair and the point of your left elbow extend forward. You can always take your left arm out and palm up or down. Kick your way out of your pose. And as you do, bend your left knee. See if you can step your right foot back. I have trouble with this transition. Good inhale to reach your arms up. On your exhale, you can cactus to back bend. You might reach your arms up and back to back bend. You might put your hands on your hips, hang your head back, trust your weight into your left heel. Good. Pull your heart back up through center, straighten your left leg, and exhale to turn it around. Bend your right knee, lift your heart up, and maybe back. And again, whatever you did with your arms, you might recall and repeat. Inhale up through your heart, exhale, bring your hands down, step forward, and maybe you can pause your left knee bent, your left foot behind you and grab for it. Bring your right fingertips to your right elbow, or right shoulder point rather, with your elbow bent. Inhale to lift your heart and exhale to lift it. Send the bill of your elbow forward. Let your shoulders turn. Inhale. Kick your way out and land. Samasiti. All right. Inhale your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga dandasana. Inhale, upward dog. Exhale, downward dog. Either gave way between your hands. And exhale, you might slide, struggle, slow clock, cross and roll your way to a seat. I'm thinking of Oh, they killed this fire, but who knows? All right, <laughs> we'll do a little bit of work here on the ground. Um, hmm. What am I going to say? <laughs> In general, remember that every stretch is actually contraction. Your muscles are doing something right? in these actions, right? It's not um, like a rope that gets slack, right? It's something that's always sort of stretching to keep itself tight and contracting to keep itself connected. So don't worry too much about that, but if you notice yourself gripping, you may find that you have the support from an oppositional muscle to release and you can stretch it out for you. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Sit up nice and tall. My dog's not sure about it. Um, we'll find our way into staff pose. And just like the Chaturanga Dandasana, it is Danda Dandasana in the staff posture. Rest your hands lightly on the ground, but really you're using the muscles of your spine, the muscles of your iliopsoas to hold yourself up. 
You always bend your knees a little if you need to, so to get that forward and up action. Roll your shoulders down your back and tuck your chin. We're gonna do a little bit of boat pose. So you might have to scoot your hips forward or lean your hips back. Tilt your upper body back and perch on or behind your sitting bones. Your toes might be low, they might be at uh, knee height. You might be straightening your legs. Take a couple breaths inside of the shape. And remember that it becomes all about your shoulders. Try to find a different way. Be even less uh, done with more ease, the better place to be. Press your right ankle over your left. Press your hands down. Inhale, try to lift your seat. You can set your hips down. You can take your legs out long in front of you. And we're going to seat it forward fold. Big toe hold inversion. And inhale, and lower your heart. And exhale, fold over your legs. Okay, so all this has been a little bit of an ameliorated uh, Shanga primary business. I skipped over some stuff to get to the ground a little sooner. Did things in a different way, added some other postures from another series, some whole other practices. Inhale, unroll your heart. Exhale, release. Come back to the boat pose, Nalasana. Then you might twist, inhaling and exhaling to twist to the right. You might tuck your elbow down, inhale back to center, exhale to the left. Follow your breath. This time, take your legs out long. Keep your legs straight. If you have issues with the backs of your knees feeling weak, you can do is use your knees a little bit and see if that changes anything. Otherwise, push your hands down. Make sure they're far enough forward that you actually can go forward and put weight forward as opposed to back behind you. Take an inhale. Exhale to roll forward and down. Kick into your heels and inhale. Press into your hands and see if you can lift your hips off the earth. Exhale to lower them. Cross your left ankle over your right, go forward over your right, step back, Chaturanga Dandasana, inhale, through upward facing dog, exhale back, downward facing dog, and come through to the seats, you can roll over, that's my last form without rolling through the knee. Right, we'll do one more version of forward folding. Reach for the outsides of your heels or feet. And again, you could bend your knees and do this even with your knees and feet wide. Make space for your body, your flesh as it is. Inhale and roll your heart. Straighten out, lengthen. Exhale to fold, breathe. Inhale and roll. Exhale. Release your grip. Now in a boat pose. And this time I'll do a little rolling down onto my back and back up. You're always welcome to do this or to skip it. You know, these are just ideas about different ways to train the strength of the center of our bodies to keep ourselves healthy. Inhale. Exhale to roll back. Inhale to rock forward. And I like to do this without the aid of my hands. If I can, go up into my shoulders, breathing. Exhale to roll. Back up. Inhale. Exhale. Take an inhale while you're up and back. And exhale to do the roll. Inhale. The boat pose. Exhale to roll. Mm -hmm. 
take a couple more rocks and rolls. And you're welcome to try to hang your feet off the ground and inhale to lift. Put your hands down. Exhale, press your right ankle over. Step back. Move through Chaturanga Vinyasa. Use high to low flows or head back to downward facing dog pose. Remind the gateway between your hands. Exhale, side or struggle through. Bring the soles of your feet together and your knees out wide. You can scoot yourself forward a little bit. Inhale to unroll and exhale to fold. Baddhanasana, the down dangle. There's a lot of pressure in your inner knees. You might scoot your heels further forward away from your pubic bone. Might give your inner knees less pressure and your thigh bones more space to rotate outward in the back of the Maybe. Maybe. And then have a sit up. Now to the outside edge of your left hip. See if you can fold your right knee back. So you might end up in a little bit of a stag position. You might be able to roll your right calf out. You can start to take your left leg out and see. You can use your hands to help you scooch over. You can stay here or come down and back onto your hands. Feel free to plant your left foot and come all the way down. Feel free to take your arms overhead if you come to the earth, grab through your elbows, etc. It's okay if your right knee lifts up off the ground, just so long as you don't have pain. Some pressure, as long as it's not incredible pressure, or pressure that stays after you're out of the shape. It's all good. You can also wiggle around a little bit. And slowly, when you're ready, I'm going to climb back up and out. I'm going to move my hat. There we go. <laughs> you can drag your head to follow this. Okay, I'll wait and stay where you are for a sec. All right, and we'll to the outside edge. You can turn your right leg back into the Vatikanasana and fold your left leg back. Use your hands to scooch up and over. And lay down. Stay upright. Sometimes staying upright is already enough, right? There's enough pressure, enough expansion at the top of the left quad. You might even fold forward. Remember that there's no need to do the last most dramatic thing. It's a very like new capitalistic idea. That there's some ideal form that we're sort of performing. And <laughs> that if we just mingle our bodies into it, we'll know the secret truths of the universe and defy death. Would that we could, right? I promise you that I've met a single a person who I thought had done the postures and because of it they had found enlightenment. They took the time to breathe and meditate and pay attention, listen, practice compassion. Those are the things that change us. It's good to stretch our bodies, to care for them. Remember what it is that you are practicing. And take your time. Slowly come back up. You might drag your head after your heart. Go to the outside edge. Just release your left leg long. Press your left ankle over your right and inhale. Lift it. Exhale, roll over it for last. Chaturanga Nandasana. Inhale, upward dog. You might stay in upward dog and hang into a cobra. Put your hips sink and rock from side to side. And practice bending one knee the other if it feels good. Sometimes these deep compressions of the lower back are just like all suffering and it's okay to skip it, head back to down dog a little early. You might stay for a few breaths and then back or go. through to a seat. 
give your legs that long in front of you and roll down into your back. So I'll tuck in the ridge pose and demonstrate coming up into the upward facing bow. So from the seated position, tuck your tail, roll yourself down onto your back. Stay integrated into your sense of center. Bend your knees and plant your feet. For, for the bridge pose, it's really a shoulder stance, right? With our feet on the ground, right? We call it the Sarvangasana or the Satvibandha Sarvangasana bound form of it. I guess the idea is you might hold your feet or something, have a bind, but we're not so worried about that. It's just being supported on the shoulders and the feet and letting the back be an extension, be in a backward bend. Take an exhale to push your hips, to tuck your tail, push your lower back down. Inhale to lift your hips. You might squeeze your glutes to help carry your hips up. You might roll your shoulder blades together underneath you. Some people like to interweave their fingers or reach for their ankles. You're welcome to that. But also keep your hands separated and down. Rotate your heart up. It's okay if your knees go wide, but you want to make sure you still feel supported, even samasitihi across your feet. Try not to turn your head right to left. You could always prop up blocks underneath your hips. You let it be a little lower. It doesn't have to be super duper extended. You want to head into the upward bow. Plant your hands on the mat next to your ears. Fingers point down, thumbs towards uh, your ears, fingers towards your shoulders. From the bridge pose, inhale, lift your heart up and hang your head. You can always take that little pit stop in the crown of your head if it feels good. Just try to stay support over your hands so your neck doesn't take the load there. Press through your feet to lift your heart up. Do your best not to look up underneath yourself. Let your neck and head hang freely. Five more breaths, or you can come down to rest whenever you like, slow and steady, careful and at ease. In your fifth exhale, perhaps in the next exhale or two, tuck your chin, land on your shoulders, and roll down through your spine. Drop your knees from side to side, twist out any clenching or holding in your lower back, and draw your knees in towards your chest. You can roll behind them, around them, grab them in close, rock and roll from side to side. There might be other finishing poses you want to work on from here. Feel free to do any and all of them. You might hang out here for a while. Head into inversion practice. You're welcome to stay on your back or to roll onto your side to rest or onto your belly to rest. Just use any postural resting shape. I'm going to roll to one side and sit up for sitting practice. Usually I'm not so blessed as to have props so close for day to day, so I'm going to grab this sandbag to sit up on. And a little bit of a lift. And as you settle down to rest, and you might close your eyes or look at one spot that isn't moving in your space. Anything you might take in the given circumstances of your metaphysical practice. Who are you? Where are you? What are the identities? And especially if those are things that you really tie into, you can ask yourself who is witnessing those identities, who is hearing them or seeing them, who is knowing them. And that's what we're talking about when we need witness consciousness, trying to orient ourselves with that, right? that pure sense of witnessing, listening, and feeling, so that we can be free from being pushed and pulled around by worldly ideas, as it were. And again, I'm always kind of simplifying and oversimplifying to drop in a little bit of thought about it. So keep that in mind, I'm giving only one source. And I'm just trying to spark a lot of curiosity and a lot of compassion. So as you find your place of rest, whatever physical position it might be, I mean, you might close your eyes or rest somewhere in a moving spot. Let your hands fall to a place of relative neutrality where they don't need to move too much. If you need to get a layer or adjust a prop or something, do what you need to, scratch your nose, etc. 
If you're still doing postural work, please take your time. Maybe you can pause the video or join us when you're ready. Eventually, we head to integration to rest on the back or in the seat in the belly. Integration, we're trying to be still and at ease so that we can pay attention to how things really are, as little distraction as possible, and so that we can see that without doing with our karma anything at all, we're still able to be, create something of great value, that which witnesses how things are. Put your Ujjayi breath, your low body, your natural involuntary breath sense. You might even follow it with the eye of your mind. Now I'm inhaling in, now I'm exhaling out. You do get lost in thought and space and time, in the openness of your awareness, of your sense uh, abilities, your sense organs, your sense gifts. Come back to sensing your heart beating in your chest and your breath moving in and out. When the time comes to change, I'll call you up and out. Until then, pay attention to how things really are. Sahana Bhavatu, Sahana Bhunaktu, Sahaviryam Karvavai, Tejasi Navadi Tamastu, Mavet Vishavai, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. If you're lying in rest or sitting in meditation, I wish to remain as such, do for as long as you'd like. If and when the time comes for you to return, follow your breath, ask it to rise a little bit towards your awareness, just enough for you to ride it into action. Wiggle gently your extremities, fingers, toes, muscles of face before moving more deeply. You might take those sorts of rising from nap stretches, reach out and up like a cartoon character in a, in a morning shot. You might wrap yourself into a ball if you're on your back and roll to one side for a while, gather your knees into your chest and stay that way for a bit before coming up to a seat. Closing chant in the lineage of Krishna Chaya from the south of India from Mysore. The overarching meaning is about learning together, may we together as we learn be protected, may we together know ease and joy, may our work together for the liberation of all be brilliant and illuminated, may our work seek to contribute to the happiness and freedom of all beings, out of this context of universality, non-dualism, and peace. Um, if you'd like, you can seal your practice. If you want to, you can come to a seat or any position of import. Hold your hands in Anjali Mudra. This is a gesture of non-dualism. You could also hold it in the eye of your mind, the idea of the feeling. Express it with your body, the idea that things seem 
that seem desperately uh, separate actually have a place where they meet on the sort of field of everything where we see that they are actually one. Hey, thank you for your time, your energy, giving your thumbs to your lips, your third eye, your heart, hold and bow to yourself, bow to the practice. We practice gratitude for those who sought before us. Again, my name is Alyssa and I offer you all this as humbly as I can. Um, the hope of your great forgiveness <laughs> for my imperfections and how I deliver it to you and also just who I am, etc. so on. Um, please be kind to yourself. And if you do need anything, it's like, oh, if we just had a practice where you showed me how to do all this without my wrists spared any weight or something like that, like, oh, please reach out. Um, otherwise, know that living in a little mystery and a little discomfort is often a big part of this and that your own sovereignty your own agency, your own sense of the work uh, will definitely guide you. And I'll let this dive down. Um, again, you can check out the information on the video about um, how it all works, how to support it. Um, but mostly, thank you for practicing. Um, I so, so appreciate um, taking the time uh, to do any sort of practice of waking up from conditioned existence um, to pay attention to how things really are. <laughs> Oh, again, if uh, you have any feedback, feel free to reach out to me, let me know. Otherwise, hopefully the sun shines in your face and the wind blows on your skin, and hopefully we'll get to see each other again soon. Thank you.